currently, we need to take it out of the public sector. We need to concession those airports. Strategizing to ease doing business in Nigeria is part of the focus as Presidential Business Forum holds in Abuja. You have always been a mother to all of us. And all we can say is that God Almighty should bless you. More relief for victims of Benue flooding and development of the Lake Chad Basin countries. Nigeria set to get largest chunk of multi-million dollar funds. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I'm Cyril Stober here in Abuja. And also tonight on Network News from our zones, we have Adimola Adewi in Lagos and Fatai Adeloja in Ibado. The federal government has approved the concessioning of the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, and two other airports in the country. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju announced this at the fifth quarterly presidential business forum in Abuja. Joy Uzo has the details. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo says the decision to concession some major airports in the country is part of enhancing efficiency needed to ease the process of doing business in Nigeria. He says the government will carry Nigerians along because their support and that of the private sector is crucial to boosting the economy. We need to do uh, a, a general overhaul, which is what we're looking at. But more importantly, we need to take it out of the public sector. We need to concession those airports. Fortunately, the Federal Executive Council has approved the concessioning of uh, the Lagos Airport, Abuja, and So we need to put this through an open, transparent process so we get you know, the best you know, companies in the world to come and take a look at it and see. And obviously, this is a very attractive proposition for many because this is a major hub. On par, the vice president says the federal government is annexing renewable energy sources to deliver efficient electricity, especially for micro, small and medium enterprises in the country. Some key players from the private sector raised issues relating to the challenges hampering operations, especially those bordering on regulatory agencies, which are central to creating right atmosphere for business. Even in areas where you know, we are still trying to make progress, I think the progress we've made so far have been drawn largely from our interaction with the private sector. So we believe that like in many respects, we are becoming more and more of a responsive government. They have recorded some successes. A lot of things have now improved. Also, we have to patronize made in Nigeria. The local content is very important. The Presidential Quarterly Business Forum was established to provide an opportunity for the economic management team to interact with members of the organized private sector on issues of common interest relating to the economy. In Abuja, Joy Uzo, NTA News. I'm being joined now by the Special Advisor to the President on Economic Matters, Dr. Adiemi Dipeolu. Dr. Dipeolu, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having well, me. It's been ongoing efforts to try and ease the process of doing business in Nigeria. And uh, you've just had another quarterly forum here. Can we at this stage now begin to assess if we've started seeing any improvement? Yes, thank you very much. Indeed, as you know, the quarterly business forum was established as a means of enabling the federal government to engage uh, with the private sector on the business environment in the country. And so this uh, particular forum was dedicated, as you know, to a priority of the Buhari administration, uh, which is uh, to make it easier for businesses uh, to operate in the country. And so the first phase of the work of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council focused on eight core areas in which we want to try and uh, make a lot of progress ranging from um, registering a business, uh, getting construction permits, right up to trading ac ac across borders, entry and exit of people and the like. And you would agree with me that across uh, many of those sectors, we are beginning to see some progress. Certainly, business registration of businesses, for instance, we see that we've brought down the timelines. It's cheaper to do so now. You don't need a lawyer to do so, for instance. You will find, even as I said the other day, 
that just even traveling out at the airport, you don't really have to go through all those hoops uh, before you get to checking in your luggage. And so across uh, the country, working with the local governments, uh, with state governments, as well as um, a variety of uh, private sector actors, there is indeed uh, quite a bit of progress and we are optimistic um, that um, we are on the way. But uh, some still raise concerns about um regulatory agencies and uh, the multiple processes they might go. Have you been able to bring that down to the barest minimum? Thank you. That's the purpose of today's uh, quarterly business forum, focusing on that particular sector. The idea was to give the private sector operators a sense of some of the things that government has tried to do and some of the things that we think are beginning to work. But you want, we wanted feedback, as it were, from the private sector sitting with the ch chief executives of a lot of the regulatory agencies, several of them, almost 20 of them, sitting with them and letting them understand that, yes, you've done some work, we appreciate this, but we still need to do a bit of work on both sides. And we saw it more as a partnership to get Nigeria going, a discussion, a conversation around what remains to be done, how do we see it, what perspective do you have, and what are the concerns that can be addressed uh, by talking and uh, collaborating in this manner. Well, let me just quickly take you up on this before we round off. It has to do with uh, a concession in certain, you know, uh, public enterprises. Um, it's part of the collaboration with the private sector, but uh, we still ask this question. We know that this is not privatization per se, but going by what we have seen in privatization, where, well, it used to, uh, the feeling used to be that everything that's in private hands works smoothly. That has not been quite true in our case. How will the interests of the public be maintained in you know, enterprises that you give out on concession? Okay, um, I think first of all, the story of privatization is mixed. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to go into advertising some businesses, but certainly some of the privatized companies have managed to find carve their niche and do quite well. But concession is not quite privatization. Mm -hmm. Concessioning is giving out the management uh, to uh, a private entity to run on, on business lines. Uh, but you see, then when you concession, then you have certain parameters, you have certain uh, guidelines by which first that process takes place to ensure you have the best person uh, to run those facilities. But equally important, there are ways and means of ensuring that the benchmarks, the performance indicators you give to the concessionaire uh, can be complied with. All right, well, well, we'll have to leave it there. I would like to thank you, Dr. Dipe Ulu, uh, Special Advisor to the President on Economic Matters. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Right. And still talking about uh, keeping the economy going, the Buhari administration will continue to work towards achieving inclusive and sustainable economic growth despite falling oil prices and production volumes. This assurance is contained in a message by Vice President Yemi Oshibaju, presented by the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adioshun, at the opening of a three-day national workshop on alternative sources of revenue for sustainable development in states and local government councils. Chukunonso Mwabweze reports. Records have shown that states and local governments in Nigeria are endowed with diverse rich natural resources, which if properly explored, will boost the nation's gross domestic product, GDP. These participants from states and local governments across the country have converged on Abuja the instance of revenue mobilization, allocation and physical commission to chart a new course on ways of tapping into these economic potentials instead of what they refer to as the over-reliance on the monthly federal allocation, which has for several years resulted in an unsustainable economic culture. An assertion the vice president, represented by the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adoshin, couldn't agree less. Now we have built the foundations for growth, and we expect now there to be very, very rapid, rapid development, accelerating the pace of reforms at all levels. New additional sources of revenue are being studied, and the Commission is designing ways and means of generating and collecting these revenues for the benefit of the states and the local governments. Some participants speak on the importance of the workshop. This workshop has really re-energized us to be in a better position to give our best. 
we look at various areas to actually bring uh, many key factors that will improve the efficiency of governance. It is expected that at the end of the workshop, practical and implementable fiscal resolutions on ways of making states and local governments more viable economically will be reached. From the International Conference Centre, Abuja, Chukunon Songwa NTN News. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has dismissed Senator Dino Melae's suit challenging the validity of the process of his recall by his constituents. Justice Namdi Dunga dismissed the plaintiff's application for lack of merit. Delia Tumbi reports. On July 6th, Senator Dino Milai got an esparte order of a federal high court sitting in Abuja barring the Independent National Electoral Commission from proceeding with its recall process pending the determination of the suit before it. This esparte order is what INEC challenged going by the time frame of 90 days to conclude the recall process in line with the provisions of the 1999 Constitution as amended. In his judgment, Justice Nand Dimba ordered Independent National Electoral Commission to proceed with the recall process. This judgment terminates the earlier Esparte order, stopping the electoral umpire from performing its constitutional duty. Justice Dimba noted that the 90 days period within which the Constitution ordered INEC to conduct a referendum on receiving the recall petition has been put on pause since June 23rd when Senator Dino Melai commenced the suit. The judge ordered that the period will only continue running from Monday 11 September when the judgment was given. The court also aired that the petitioners and INEC are not under any obligation in line with sections 68 and 69 of the 1999 constitution to serve copies of the petitions on the plaintiff before embarking on the exercise as argued by Melaye's counsel. Justice Dimban maintained that Senator Dino Melaye's suit against the electoral umpire was hasty, premature, and presumptuous, pointing out that the senator representing Kogi West Senatorial District did not explore all internal remedies available to him in the Constitution. A similar suit filed by the All Progressives Congress in Kogi State also suffered the same fate. With this judgment, the Independent National Electoral Commission will now proceed on Senator Dino Melaye's recall process with an amended timetable. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. With the increase of internet penetration and its attendant increase of cybercrimes, the Council of Europe and ECOWAS region are holding a conference on harmonizing legislations to tackle these phenomena, saying nations must cooperate to win the fight. Edino Justice reports that the focus is on building capacity in cybercrime legislation and judicial international cooperation. Cybercrimes manifest in various forms, some of which are identity theft, card fraud, denial of services, phishing, spamming, web jacking, and software piracy. It is noted that Nigeria loses over $500 million yearly to cybercrimes, so do other countries in the West African region. Various speakers at this conference agree that no individual country, region, or organization can win the fight against cyber crimes alone. There is need for harmonization of legislations in the gathering of electronic evidence for right prosecution of cyber offenses. Over 13 million uh, Nigerians have been victims of, of cyber crimes. Now, in Ghana, loses uh, last last year uh, 50 million dollars due to cyber crime or cyber security incidents. What we intend to do is to work together so that we can indeed win this battle against cyber crime. What can we do, as in one single voice, to improve their legislation? Sometimes to draft new legislation on cyber crime. The delegates, while expressing expectations of the conference said they had absolute or weak laws in their respective countries and look forward towards regional cooperation for effective legislation to curb cyber crimes in Abuja, Edina Justice, NTA News. And you can watch this broadcast live online via the NT mobile app, which you can download on your Android device or the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. And still to come, President Buhari meets the National Council of Traditional Rulers, urges them to exhibit a high sense of honor. Stay with us. From 1967 to 1970, 
Nigeria went through a horrifying civil war. It didn't matter who was wrong or right. Everybody suffered. Those who fought that war say it should never happen again. So a lot of people will say, but you were leading the first one. Yes, I led the first one. I don't think a second one is necessary. We should have learned from that first one. Otherwise, the dead would have been to no avail, would all have been in vain. The words of our elders are full of wisdom. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Nigeria is a strong emerging world economy with a population of over 170 million people. With the diligent work of the Standards Organization of Nigeria in line with the federal government's economic diversification agenda, SON has put in place accredited laboratories to ensure that made in Nigeria products meet international standards and ready for export. SON regularly conducts products registration, certifications, factory inspections, monitoring, a metrology laboratory to get accurate measurements, while SONCAP checks the conformity of imported products and the SON Legal Act to prosecute offenders. Don't sell and don't buy substandard products. Before you buy, look well well. See something? Say something. Or call these numbers. SON Improving Life Through Standards. Availability. Check. Confidentiality. Check. Integrity. Check. Transformation in Action. The six years of Governor Abdul Aziz Abubakar Yari in Zamfara State clearly manifest good governance and foresight. In fact, transforming the agrarian state to the promised land. Welcome to Zamfara, a state being governed by a visionary and dynamic leader whose magic finger is touching every aspect of human lives. No wonder Abdul Aziz Yari is being referred as agent of Buhari's change mantra. Yari is bringing development closer to the Zamfara people and the nation at large. Zamfara, the pride of the nation. This message is brought to you by Iowa Media Group. What about Indo in the This is not my Indo Please, sir, it's not Indo Don't call it Indo The taste is the difference. The difference is in the taste. That's why my brothers, my mommy, my daddy, and I all enjoy admission so very delicious in the minutes. <laughs> the difference is the taste. Taste is the difference. Yes. Difference is in the taste. Nothing tastes like mine in the minutes. <laughs> Indomie noodles. Tasty nutrition. Good for you. The Nigeria of our dreams is our collective responsibility. Take advantage of the Voluntary Asset and Income Declaration Scheme, VAIDS. Declare your full assets and income and regularize your tax status with VAIDS, which is on from July 1st, 2017 till March 31st, 2018. It attracts no interest, no penalty, no tax prosecution, and no tax audit. Declare early to avoid interest and penalties. Visit www.vase.gov.ng or the nearest tax office for more information. This message is brought to you by the Federal Government, Federal Inland Revenue Service, and State's Board of Internal Revenue. Vase, I declare, my duty, my nation. Why Abwat, the pace setter and UNESCO acclaimed world class university, is the first choice of students. First university to take off with state of the art structures and equipment, benchmark, model, and reference point. NUC, best law college in West Africa. NUC, template for engineering studies. NSE, modern medical college and the 21st century teaching hospital. Nigeria's number one best private university in Google Scholar ranking. Accreditation of 47 undergraduate and postgraduate programs. Freedom of religion. Modern an entrepreneurial structure for 28 skills. Abu. 2017 admission still open in the postgraduate and undergraduate colleges of engineering, sciences, social and management sciences, agriculture, medicine, health sciences, except in MBBS and law. For details, visit www.abu.edu.ng. Email admission at abu.edu.ng. Telephone 081 277 2121. Abu. A vision in motion. 
The Honorable Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Dr. Kayodo Fayami, and the Minister of State, Honorable Abubakar Bawabwari, cordially invite State Commissioners, Permanent Secretaries in charge of Mining and Mineral Resources, Distinguished Senate and House Committee members on Mines and Steel, and all relevant stakeholders in the Mining and Mineral Resources sector to the maiden edition of the National Council on Mining and Mineral Resources Development with the theme Enhancing Mineral Resource Governance Towards Economic Growth and Diversification. Date. 12th to 14th September 2017. Venue, Nigerian Air Force Conference Center, Plot 496, Amadi Beluwe, Kadu, Abuja, near next supermarket. Time, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. Special guest of honor, Mala Mohamed Belo, Honorable Minister, Federal Capital Territory, Mohamed Abbas, Permanent Secretary, Announcer. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development is organizing a three-day national conference on the transformation of Nigeria's livestock industry. Date, 12 to 14 September 2017. Time, now 2 p.m. on the first day and 9 a.m. subsequently. Any inconvenience caused by this change is highly regretted. Venue, International Conference Center, Abuja. Special Guest of Honor, His Excellency Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, President, and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Chief Host, Aldo Ogbe, OFR, Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. Invited guests include Governors, National Assembly members, Ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Development Partners, Delegates from ECOWAS countries, Commissioners of Agriculture in the 36 States of the Federation, as well as the FCT, Professionals in the Livestock Industry, traditional rulers, farmers, and pastoralists. Announcer, Dr. Booker Hassan, Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Thanks for staying with us on the news. Traditional rulers have been urged to prevail on their subjects and leadership positions to exhibit high sense of honor and patriotism in the discharge of their responsibilities so as to avoid inflicting pain and distress on the nation's poor. President Muhammad Buhari, who made the plea while addressing the National Council of Traditional Rulers, particularly made a case for proper care of senior citizens by state governors so that their selfless service to the nation will not be in vain. State House correspondent Adam Sambu reports. Members of the National Council of Traditional Rulers led by the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar, were in the State House to formally rejoice with President Muhammad Buhari for his return from vacation in good health, thereby keeping the nation's hope alive for a greater future. To further assure you of our total support and commitment towards a very strong, stable, United Federal Republic of Nigeria. Speaking on behalf of their colleagues in the six geopolitical zones, the Royal Fathers assured the President of their loyalty as well as continued support and cooperation in his genuine efforts at making Nigeria better. We are here basically to speak with one voice, to stand with you in taking this country to another level. Mr. President, the South is because your agenda for Nigeria is good. That is to say, you have Nigeria in your mind. We pledge to work for peace and stability in the region so that as one people, 
and the unity provides a peaceful and stable environment to produce oil and sell it. And we still continue to pray for you, Mr. President, for Allah to strengthen you more, to give you the courage to lift Nigeria to the level that every other nation in this world will envy. President Muhammad Buhari thanked the royal founders for the show of support and solidarity, describing it as reassuring. His administration, he promised, will continue to live above board in the execution of the Change Nigeria project until the nation's majority feel the impact of governance in their living conditions. I'm living with the problem of this country day by day, and mostly of ordinary people. And we certainly have to make sure that we completely secure Nigeria. And when we secure Nigeria, we have to secure its resources to pursue programs and projects that will better the lives of all our people, to live together, to work together. The president, however, made a case for the royal fathers to show more interest in the way the people are governed by insisting that those in leadership positions always do the right thing. You are living with the people. You know the actual problem more than us sitting here. So nobody can deceive anybody in this country on our mismanagement of our resources. It is very important that we made sure those above and below us looked after public resources as they looked after their own resources. Please continue to pacify your people, tell them to serve our people with more sympathy and give them security. During the event, prayers were offered for the president as well as unity, stability and development of Nigeria. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Nigeria is to get the largest share of about $700 million earmarked for the development of the Lake Chad Basin countries by the United Nations. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyama stated this when he received the Under Secretary General and Emergency Relief Coordinator of the United Nations, Mark Lowcock. Adibala Brooklyn Sunday was there. It is the stance of observers that the Nigerian government, whose responsibility it is to cushion hardship faced by victims of crisis in the country, has actually worked the talk with the support of development partners. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. The UN Undersecretary is in Nigeria to understand better ways on how the United Nations and the rest of the international community can support efforts of the Nigerian government and other governments in the region to deal with the crisis in the Lake Chad Basin. The Secretary General, Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Onyama says Nigeria recognizes efforts of the UN to give support to Nigerians facing humanitarian challenges. We also appreciate uh, a lot more the coordination um, you know, between our national efforts and the international community and I thank the, also the resident coordinator for the excellent work he's doing. McLocock briefed newsmen ahead of his visit to the countries that make up Lake Chad Basin. Uh, terrible, terrible acts of violence being committed. Um, there still remains a lot to do. Uh, many people are still just a step from starvation. And to bring their story to the leaders of the world at the General Assembly in New York, where we'll discuss all the issues and try to ensure that the eyes of the world do not fall away from this region. Mark Lowcock was the permanent secretary of the Department for International Development, DFID. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Reconstruction of public buildings in areas affected by insurgency has been flagged off with Michika local government area of Adama State. The chairman, Victim Support Fund, General Teofilos Renjuma, who performed the groundbreaking ceremony, said hospitals and schools have also been earmarked for the same purpose. Mary Adamu reports. Reconstruction of Michika local government secretariat is the first to be carried out by the Victim Support Fund in the area of public buildings, a site of the interventions done in the area of food and medical support since four years of Boko Haram attack in the northern part of Adama State. The demolition of the affected structures at the Michika local government, ready for the reconstruction work, have been done, building drawings approved and materials supplied on site. 
performing the groundbreaking ceremony which signals hope for workers' conducive working environment, rekindled their hope to return to their duty posts. Retired General Tiwa Njima said the resilient posture of the Mijika people epitomized patriotism and assured of more support and Saka to settle down. The executive director of the fund, Professor Sondo Ochoache, said such interventions will continue and that they will be proactive to the end. Our last intervention in this state was providing an additional 20 million naira to the hospital in Michigan. In Yola, Mary Adam, NTA News. The wife of the president, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, has donated food items and other essential commodities to flood victims in Benue State to cushion the effects of their hardship. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports from Makuri, the Benue State capital. This is ultra modern international market, Makudi, the Benue State capital. It is one of the 21 internally displaced persons camp in the state providing shelter to over 5,000 victims of flood that ravaged the area recently. Taking refuge in this camp are mostly women and children who are affected by flood, which resulted to the destruction of properties worth billions of Naira. In complementing government effort to support the lives of the victims is what prompted the intervention of the wife of the president, Aisha Muhammad Bukhari. This prompted sending the delegation comprising the wife of the Nasarawa state governor, Dr. Merotan Kuala Makura, who is also a leader of the delegation, the wife of the Kebi state governor, Dr. Zena Bagudu, as well as the senior special assistant to the president, Dr. Hajosani, to sympathize with the victims and provide us some relief materials. Her Excellency has passion and is very passionate about the problems of women in Nigeria and she felt so touched because she was away out of the country but she saw what happened and she has decided to send her widow's might to these women to be able to alleviate their suffering before they get back to their various homes. The items donated include rice, tomato paste, gari, food seasoning, nutritional packs of food items for children and other essential commodities. Receiving the items on behalf of the Benue State Government the deputy governor of the state, Benson Abodo, described the humanitarian well, gesture well, of the wife of the president as bringing hope to the hopeless. You have always been a mother to all of us. And all we can say is that God Almighty should bless you. With the devastating flood which affected over 110,000 families cutting across 21 local government areas of the state, the wife of the president is calling on Nigerians to support the victims in whatever way possible. From Makudi, the Benue state capital, Ali Kabir, NTA News. And a bit of politics now. APC governorship candidate for the November 2017 Anambra governorship election, Tony Mui, has urged members of the party to work towards issues that will add value to the party's strategic efforts to victory. He was speaking with the media in Abuja after he appeared at the Hassan Lower led APC Anambra Governorship Primary Appeals Committee. Salihu Abdullahi reports. Members of the appeal committee met with the party's governorship candidates and executives behind closed doors. Among issues the committee is expected to thrash out is the petition against the All Progressives Congress APC primary election held on the 26th August 2017 by one of the party's aspirants, Senator Andy Uba. He alleged that the exercise was marred with irregularities. Appearing before the appeals committee, winner of the August 26th governorship primary, Tony Mwoye acknowledged the transparent manner the exercise was conducted and one same gesture during the November governorship election. In APC, once the executive or delegate vote in, that their secret mandate will be maintained. And I have no doubt it will be maintained. We are still appealing to him, I've been told the people then. Let all of us go and work for the party to win. It's not about Tony Moe, it's for the party to win. We want to bring a different a difference in Anambra. We want to stop the looting, the looting, the massive looting in Anambra State. It could be recorded that Tony Moe scored 2,146 votes 
to defeat his closest contendant, Senator Andy Uba, who got 931 votes during the governorship primary election in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NCA News. And time now for us to link up with Adimola in our Lagos Network Center for the top stories that are coming from there. Adimola, it's up to you. Thank you, Cyril. Good evening and warm welcome to Lagos. The federal government's quest to rid the country of illegal arms and ammunition is yielding positive results as the Nigerian Customs Service intercepted a container load of 1,100 pump-action rifles by operatives of the Tinkan Island Command, Abapa, in Lagos. Comptroller General of Customs, Colonel Ahmed Ali, displayed the seizure at a media briefing. Ken Igbeluhe has the detail. Yet another successful operation by the operatives of the Nigerian Customs Service Tinkan Command. The weapons were imported into the country from Turkey. The Comptroller General of Customs told newsmen that the raffles were concealed inside the container with the bill of lading indicating that it was conveying watch and basins. He further disclosed that a custom officer suspected to have cut off the seal of the container without following due process and a clerk at the command had been arrested in connection with the discovery. No information has been provided for the whereabouts of the identity of the importers. This particular seizure being the third in the series of arms seizure within eight months of this year, it presents an all-time high of the triumph of the Nigerian Customs Service in their own bid to, to ensure that illicit weapons, illicit goods are not imported into this country. While commending the operatives of the Customs Intelligence Unit for a job well done, the Comptroller General says Customs Management will sustain its ongoing reform in the system to place the service in a better position to diligently serve the nation. Our enforcement is getting tougher. We are doing what is right. And we are getting the commitment of our own officers and they have now been beginning to understand that our first and foremost primary job is to secure this country. It will be recalled that on the 31st of January and May this year, the Nigerian Customs intercepted consignments of firearms being transported through trucks in Lagos. The two cases are in court. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. The Southeast to Northeast Standard Gauge Rail Project is built to take off soon. This followed his approval by the Federal Executive Council. Minister of Transport Rotimi Amechi disclosed this after a stakeholders' meeting on the progress of work on the Lagos Ibadan Rail project in Lagos. Dotu Oguyemi reports. The meeting evaluated the progress of the construction in which Nigeria as a joint financier has fulfilled our obligations. The Chinese contractor identified two major obstacles. This includes the NNPC gas pipeline, which runs across the rail track and a high-tension pole. Minister of Transportation Rotimi Amechi promised to take up the matter with the Ministries of Power and Petroleum for prompt relocation of the facilities. The site clearing is on. They, they started uh, taking, uh, taking away the debris and replacing land. So we believe that if they maintain currently with the speed which, which they are going, we will be able to deliver in December 2018. There are very, very significant encroachment issues that we are contending with in the Lagos area. Because they want to make the line as straight as possible to remove curves. The Minister of Transportation assures that President Mohamedou Buhari is committed to delivering a world-class rail transport system capable of boosting commercial activities across the country. It approved the construction of a standard gauge from Port Harcourt to Meduguri. One to Abakliki, one to Oka. That takes care of the entire Southeast. Meanwhile, the federal government has sent delegates to China to inspect additional locomotives and coaches for the Abuja, Kanu, and Kaduna standard gauge rail line in Lagos, Dotun, Ogumiemi, NTA News. Sixteen parents in Waiton have been selected by the Ibiduni Igodalo Foundation to undergo fertility services with certified clinics. The beneficiaries were unveiled at the first parent-in-waiting conference put together by the Ibiduni Igodalo Foundation in Lagos. Elizabeth Omori reports that the conference was tagged infertility, definition, courses and treatment. 
theme of the conference is to enlighten couples on measures to take when issues of infertility occurs. The topic, infertility, medical experts say is the inability to conceive after copulation for 12 months. The causes, experts say, include low sperm count, diabetes, ovulation disorder, fibroid, and genetic abnormality. Seek help because it could just be that maybe it's just drugs that will be given. There we have seen cases where it's just drugs you know, that will be given. We have seen cases where they have to do IUI and sometimes where they also have to do IVF. Issues bothering on surrogacy, adoption, in vitro fertilization laboratory procedures and surgery were brought to the fore. You can also go for medical intervention to help you fulfill your dreams. Adoption, yes, is a it's a very, very positive uh, and viable option to childbearing. While you're waiting, keep the relationship between yourselves hot, exciting and vibrant. Ibiduni Ihodalo, the convener of the conference, used the opportunity to advise parents in waiting to remain focused and patient until the babies come. I would like to indulge in-laws, parents, friends and family to be a bit more sensitive to people who are waiting on, waiting and trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Men must certainly need to rise to the challenge and stand by their wives throughout this journey. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle was advocated by medical experts at the conference. In Lagos, Elizabeth Omori, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. We now take a break for some commercials, after which the news continues. Stay with us. Where innovation begins. The Brain, LG Inverter Technology. Better performance. More energy savings. Now in the entire lineup at LG. The family of a con has been taken hostage by an evil looking creature. Seen your show for night. Yeah, big, big, big. Come in. Uh, my sister, I was there what was happening in the news. We were suddenly brought back your family. When I'm at the fort, I appear. My lady, I don't go cover. I'm at the fort, I get some gel capsules, tablets to handle, and suspension for picking. I'm at the fort, I just don't eat somebody, and I'm very easy to use. Ah, you are? Remember how I'm at the fort, I get scratch pin to confirm the original, and I get some gel capsules. I'm at the fort. Say no to malaria, yes to life. What makes a Niger mom powerful? I encourage my kids to learn new things. And if they get hurt, I rely on the power of my Dettol's One Capful. To fight germs, my family needs protection from germs. I use the power of Dettol's One Capful to disinfect surfaces and clothes. I trust the power of Dettol's One Capful for bathing. The power of Dettol's One Capful protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Be a powerful Niger mom with Dettol. Close Up has active zinc mouthwash to clean the deep corners of your mouth. And Micro Shine Crystals. Stay closer for longer with 12 hours of fresh breath and a beautiful white smile. Close Up, Nigeria's number one selling toothpaste. Every day, I see patients who come to me suffering from infectious diseases caused by germs. From typhoid to diarrhea, flu, cough, an average human being comes in contact with over 1 million germs daily when we use the toilet, from our door handles, from other surfaces, we transfer to others without realizing. That is why we recommend Dettol Antiseptic Liquid. Protect your family from up to 100 illness causing germs. Be Dettol sure. Be 
Sabi and make una plan well well. Know the facts. Modern family planning methods are safe and effective. You and your partner can plan when to have a child. Talk to your partner. Let them know you support using a modern family planning method. Go! Get a modern family planning method today. There's a method that is right for you and your partner. No. no. Talk. Go. Go. Get, get it, it together. together. Get, get it together, together for a brighter, brighter future. future. This Get It Together campaign is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Health. This is the game I've been waiting for, and I get a headache. But I remembered Mom's advice. Son, don't let anything stop you, okay? When headache strikes, I always trust Sudrex. Because Sudrex acts fast to relieve headaches. Sudrex, win your day. Winning in hot and dry conditions is hard. Causes the body to sweat, which attracts germs that are easily passed from one person to another. What keeps you so cool, man? Dettol Cool combines Dettol's protection and an invincible icy feel. For super cool confidence, use Dettol Cool. And we're back in Abuja with the rest of the news. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has arrived in the city of Chengdu in China ahead of a Nigerian delegation to attend the 22nd General Assembly of the United Nations World Tourism Organization's General Assembly. The minister will join other world leaders in the week-long deliberations on a roadmap for the sector as it takes a look at sustainable international tourism for development given the relative growth it has recorded in the last five years. Lai Mohammed will be making a strong appearance as Nigeria gears up to host the 56th UN WTO African Ministers of Culture and Tourism meeting in Abuja next year. The introduction of West to Wealth initiative by Kaduna State Government through public-private partnership is paying off, creating employment opportunities and making major cities clean. To further consolidate on the gains, the partners organize a sensitization walk to sensitize the people to the importance of keeping their surroundings clean and waste management. Abdullahi Garba Brinunkudu has the details. For its strategic importance as the defunct headquarters of the northern region, Kaduna is cosmopolitan in nature with large population. This results in indiscriminate dumping of refuse and poor management of such waste. The Governor El Rafai administration introduction of waste management through public-private partnership has started yielding results. The initiative under Z8 Global Alliance has created jobs for more than 6,000 persons and encouraged people to manage their waste right from home, hence the sensitization work. <laughs> teaching the people about waste management from their homes, bagging of their waste, and the fact that we can use basic you know, um, things we have in the house, like sacks and buckets to effectively manage our waste. Which means 6,500 people are on our payroll through the government initiative. Youths are being employed. We pay a minimum wage. And I can say that this is the only state that I am aware is walking the talk. Government officials from the environmental agencies pledge continuous support to keep Kaduna clean and protect the environment. This thing has been going on under the government arms, but having the private participation, it has been really a very a giant strive for the development of the land management and the environment. Because we want to raise the level of public participation. Formally, what is obtainable in Kaduna is that the government pay for everything, the government do everything. For now, some states have shown interest in following the initiative. Abdullahi Gerba Burnunkudu, NTA News. And now from our Ibadan Network Center, Fatai brings us a next report. Fatai. Thank you, Sir Oli. And it is a warm welcome to the cradle of television in Africa, Ibadan. Rather than abate the paralysis in the public 
sector is becoming worrisome as other sister unions in the academic sector have declared strike as well. Rafia Animashan Badmos has an update. A negotiation between the federal government and the academic staff union of universities ASU, has deepened. Other sister unions in academic institutions are agitating for similar industrial action. The University of Ibano chapters of the non-academic staff union, Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, and the National Association of Academic Technologists at Congress have also declared indefinite strike. It just has to do with um, the refusal of the government of failure to implement the judgments of uh, NIC on the issue of the staff school teachers in the universities. That is the only language our government wants. But it's going to be a total, comprehensive and indefinite strike action. Similarly, at the University College Hospital, Ibado, resident doctors said the strike is still ongoing because the national secretariat of the association is yet to say otherwise. Concerned individuals and groups are hopeful that all striking unions would reach meaningful agreement with government to fast track their resumption in the interest of the nation. In Ibadan, Bofia and Imashan Badmos, NTA News. Meanwhile, citizens and residents of Kuala State have been assured of even development of critical infrastructure for an all-round development of the state. The state governor, Abdul Fattah Ahmed, gave the assurance at the flag of a reconstructed road facilitated by the lawmaker representing Irekwadu Ekiti Okero and is in federal constituency at the House of Representatives, Funke Adidoni. Abdul Hafiz Alaya completes the report. Governor Ahmed, who described infrastructure as a key component of sustainable development, said Kuala State government will spare no effort in bridging infrastructural gaps for economic growth of the state. In achieving this, the governor promised that no section of the state will be left out in the distribution of food infrastructures and other social amenities. Based on this recognition, my government established Kuala State Infrastructure Fund, IFK, to serve as a sustainable means of funding major infrastructural projects in the state. The Zonal Intervention Fund for 2016 was committed 100% to construction of this road. This is the first. And it cuts across the three wards of Umara Township, the headquarters of my federal constituency. The representative of the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, and the Olomo of Umaro, Obachas Oladele, commended Mrs. Adedoy for the gesture, which they described as a better way of giving back to the society. From Umaro Abdelafiz, Alaya, NTA News. That's it. From that's it from the cradle, it's back to Abuja for the continuation of Network News. Thank you for time. And just a bit of a break, and uh, we'll have a bit on sports just ahead. As Nigeria gets out of recession, what are the strategies to consolidate the economy? All on NTA Tuesday Live this week. Tuesday Live promises to be incisive, informative, and educating. Join us. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, in collaboration with the National Bureau of Statistics, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, and the Federal Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, will be conducting a survey on exportable agricultural commodities in the 36 states of Nigeria and the Federal Capital Territory. The exercise will be conducted from September 2017 to November 2017. The information gathered during the exercise will be used exclusively for planning and policy formulation. It does not in any way involve taxation, regulation, or investigation. Kindly accord the enumerators the necessary support. Dr. M. A. Olaito, Director, Development Finance Department, CBN, announcer. Dettol Team is visiting schools to teach children how to protect themselves from diseases. Do you know how we get illnesses like diarrhea, cough, and cold? No. They are spread through germs on your hands. Your hands collect germs that causes diseases. You pick up germs from any surface, like when you don't wash your hands after going to the toilet while playing. And then you can get sick because of germs. 
That's why you need to fight germs to stay healthy by washing your hands regularly with Dettol soap to protect from up to 100 illness causing germs. Wash, wash, wash your hands. What you have to do is wash, wash, wash your hands. Dettol soap every day. Wash, wash, wash your hands. Wash, wash, wash your hands. Bayes University Abuja offers world-class education, uninterrupted academic session, and promising degrees. Bayes University Abuja is affordable and delivers quality with experienced international staff, superb facilities, overseas external examiners, and a serene academic atmosphere. We offer